everybody. Welcome back to Serenity Art Space. Today we're going to cover something really important and something that probably most of you are just going to completely ignore. How do I know you're going to ignore it? Because I've tried teaching it so many times. So if I get a little bitter in this video, just know it's because I've tried to teach this to young artists, uh, amateur artists that are trying to get better. And they say, Lou, what's the secret? Like, you're, I like your art. How can I get mine up to a better level? And I tell them, you need to learn to draw basic shapes in any angle shaded from any type of light source. And their face goes blank, and they say, well, I really just have trouble with noses and hands. My answer is, learn shapes. Well, I have a hard time with hair and making it look realistic. Huh? Shapes. I have a hard time drawing trees. I always draw the same tree shapes. The answer to every, almost every single problem with an artist's art is shape and form. Form is a better word for it because when you're drawing something, you want it to look like it exists somewhere. And for that, we need to have form. Here's the thing. It's not a lot to learn. It takes a little bit of practice and you don't have to practice it all at once. You can do this anytime you sit down and draw, spend five minutes playing around with some basic shapes on a scrap piece of paper and then go draw whatever you want to draw. The more you do it, eventually those shapes are going to start becoming the foundation of all your drawings and you will see improvement. I consider there to be three basic shapes. There's actually four. So, the sphere is one, a ball, uh, a wedge, which can also be, it can be a cube, a rectangle, or a, like a doorstop, anything that's got the, you know, flat sides with corners and edges to it, and then a cylinder, basically a tube, or a pipe, or a rod. Uh, those three main things, once you can learn to manipulate those and draw them anywhere, suddenly you'll find that anything you want to draw is made up of those shapes. Um, and it makes drawing so much more fun and so much easier. And you become more creative because now you can imagine things in depth and in space. The fourth one that I don't mention a lot because to me it's a kind of a, a merge of two of the uh, main primitives. It's called a torus. But basically, it's a uh, it's a donut shape or a, like a inner tube. Uh, so to me, that's a kind of a sphere and a cylinder mixed together. Uh, but the light does play on those sometimes a little bit different. So it is a good thing to practice as well. There's a few books that I'm going to mention in this video. These are books that helped me out a lot when I was first learning to draw, and these are the books that really helped me understand why shapes are important and once I went through these books, it changed my life forever in drawing. Now, I've loaned these books to other people that I've asked, how can I improve? I either give them the title of the book and have them go, or I'll, I'll actually loan them my own physical book. They bring it back to me a week or two later and say, oh, that was cool. It took me months to go through these books. So I think what they did is they just skimmed through, looked for cool things they wanted to draw, and then didn't actually read the lessons that were in there. It's very important when you are trying to improve your art that you really understand the lesson trying to be taught to you because it's important. Art is a very free medium. It's very creative. Uh, it's easier to be creative once you have the proper tools in your kit. Understanding form, light, and value, all those things. It's not that you have to constantly you, you know, think of them and memorize them, but understanding them and making them part of you when you visualize something is super important. I cannot stress that enough. All right, some of the importance of shape and form in your drawings. This is going to help you improve your drawings beyond belief. This book I bought when I was in my late teens, um, when I really wanted to learn how to draw better. My focus was comics. Don't let the fact that this book is about drawing comics fool you. This has some really good art instruction in it that is going to make your so art better. So anything you ever want to draw boils down to a few basic shapes. A sphere, cube, or a wedge, or a cylinder. 
And I'm talking everything. Clouds, trees, rocks, cars, people, everything. Elephants, cats, doesn't matter. You need to understand shapes and how to render them in different angles and lit differently. Here on this page, you can see how they're shaded differently. So depending on what your light source is, you need to understand that shape and how light is going to affect it if you're gonna draw something that looks good. So you need to practice those shapes, turning them at different angles and shading them differently. You know, if you wanna get into drawing any kind of character in any kind of action, knowing these basic shapes is gonna help you draw a better figure. Um, this is almost all spheres and cylinders and wedges. Um, and then once you have that, you can sculpt it into your finished character and the foundation is correct. So your finished character is gonna look better if you start with, your, with a good foundation. Here are just some more examples. And these are foreshortened characters, which means they're in perspective. There's parts of them coming towards you. Knowing those shapes and being able to turn them into different angles is how you get here. Um, yeah, I see a lot of times in amateur art where people will hide the arms or the hands because they don't know how to make it turn into a, a correct angle. Start with the basic shapes, get used to them. In the beginning, it takes a little while to get used to it, but once you've got it, it's as natural as breathing. And anytime you start a drawing, you start with your basic shapes and then your drawing goes so much faster. Let me move Cindy here and see if we got, yeah. You know, that's a great one with the character sitting. Hard position to draw, but if you start with your basic shapes and put them in perspective, so much easier to get there. And the human head. Again, most people you'll see me either draw it directly in profile or straight on. Turning it into an angle, that seems to mystify them. But if you break it down to a sphere and a wedge, so much easier to turn your characters into fancy angles and make much better looking artwork. This next book uh, is one that I got, uh, I want to say I was probably in my early 20s when, um, you know, I was getting the hang of drawing figures, but I wanted to push that a little bit more. Uh, Bern Hogarth has a series of books out. There's Dynamic Figure Drawing, uh, Dynamic Light and Shade. I also own that one. Uh, and I think the other one is Drawing Fabric or Dynamic Fabric, I'm not sure. Um, he used to draw the Tarzan comic strip for the newspapers. Um, amazing artist. And he would teach art classes kind of as a guest spot, as a guest speaker. And the students were amazed because he really broke things down into the basic shapes. And these students were saying that now they can draw the human figure without a model uh, and without reference just from their head by using these basic shapes. He goes into a lot more of muscle structure, the differences between male and female, uh, hands and feet. That's a tough one for most people. Again, you break this down into those basic shapes and you suddenly you're going to find yourself wanting to draw more hands and more feet on your characters. Um, and you're going to enjoy drawing a lot more. More on hands. And I bring hands up a lot because that's one of the things that most amateur artists will avoid. Our hands, they stick them into pockets, they hide them behind hair or a puff of smoke or something. Uh, I do the opposite. I try to, if I'm drawing a figure that has hands, I try to make sure that they're being seen and, and they're doing something. They're not just, you know, fingers straight out or curled up in a fist. Hands are super expressive. And they're a great tool for telling a story. To get away from the human figure, uh, this is another book that... Um, it really helped me a lot. This helped me a lot with composition and with uh, layout and design, but he also covers shape a lot in here too. When you're drawing landscapes, shape is your best friend. Uh, when you're drawing groups of mountains or trees or rocks, understanding those basic shapes and how to shade them, it's, it's gonna improve your art by leaps and bounds. You can see on this front page, this first page, 
uh, whether you're drawing clouds or trees or rocks, you know, starting with that first basic shape. Here's another great example of it, having multiple shapes grouped into one to give that, that real natural lumpy tree or rock type. And on this page here, another uh, great lesson to learn. And I'll do another video on drawing through things. Uh, I may include it in the perspective video. Uh, trees are a big thing that I see a lot of amateur mistakes where they'll draw the, the main trunk of the tree and then branches going off the left and the right. Well, branches grow all the way around the tree in 360 degrees. So learning how to draw through your shape, imagining through the other side where that other branch is coming out. Um, and this also applies to people. It applies to everything, really. So getting used to thinking of your things in three dimension, even though you're just doing two dimensional illustrations, is going to give you much more interesting uh, looking art. And mountains, very popular in art today. A lot of people doing uh, wildlife type designs, whether it's pen and ink illustrations or paintings. Uh, understanding those shapes, how light affects it, and how to shade them, all comes from understanding those basic shapes. And here's a little example of how when I am practicing with shapes and trying to stay sharp with uh, keeping things interesting, rather than just drawing a page full of cubes, a page full of spheres, and a page full of cylinders, have some fun with it. Once you start getting the hang of it, mix them all together and just see what kind of weird stuff you can come up with. Uh, it's a lot of fun and it's good practice to keep your mind sharp on how light affects things. All right, let's start with some basic shapes. I'm just going to show you a couple of different things you can do with them in ways to practice. I'll start with the sphere right up here. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. All we're concerned about is that it's a kind of a spherical shape. This could be part of a head. It could be a tree, a rock, anything. Once we have our basic shape, we need to decide a light source. I'll be doing another video uh, on light sources. So we're gonna assume it's coming from the top left here and it's striking the ball right around here. So we're gonna have our brightest area of light right around this area. Just after that, it depends on the type of light, but just after that is where we're gonna start getting dark. And so you can just lay in Kind of a little dark ring around there and extend that down through the rest of the ball getting gradually lighter as we get towards that edge a great thing to do would be to take any type of a sphere you have at home a, a tennis ball um, anything that's round and orange apple this is why you see people painting bowls of fruit it's it's shapes basically how light affects them and so now we have a sphere that has some sort of a light source on it and this is just a rough sketch but you could refine it a bit more really smooth things out now since that light is hitting here and this is a physical three-dimensional thing it's going to cast a shadow if it's sitting on a surface so we'll imagine it's sitting on some sort of a table we'll just kind of lightly sketch a little table here well, that light source is hitting it here the shadow is going to get cast down here and now we can lay in where our shadow might be we got another thing uh, to consider with this one here we're, we're making the edge of our shadow that's closest to the ball, the darkest, and it gets gradually lighter. That's not always the case. There are times, sometimes, let's say this ball was floating an inch off of the table, that shadow will actually be darker on the outer edge and get a little bit lighter as it goes towards the ball. I could show you that in another episode that I'm gonna uh, do about shadows and shading. So there's our basic thing. One more thing before we move away from the ball, let's say this table is a glass table it may also be reflecting light back towards the ball. If that's the case, you may want to add a little highlight area here on the bottom of the ball because some of that light is coming back and hitting the ball. Those are things to consider when you're doing with your shapes. Now, after the sphere, we'll go to a wedge uh, or a cube shape. So when I say wedge, it could be any sort of three-dimensional cubic type shape. It might be a, a square box, it could be a rectangle, 
some sort of a wedge, but anything that's kind of got corners and edges like this. We'll use our same light source from the top coming down this way. This is our light source here. I mean, uh, yeah, that's where our light is mostly hitting our object is right in that area. We'll take this front edge, we'll make that our darkest value because it has no light coming towards it. This side here, we do probably have some spillover of light from this light source. So I might do kind of a, a mid-tone value, kind of light up the side. Definitely darker than the top because that's our main light source. So this part's just going to have kind of a light gray to it. Uh, and then even this surface where it is lit here, it's probably not fully lit. Depends on what color this block ha happens to be. So you can even throw a little bit of a light value coming this way to really kind of accent where the light is hitting the top of our sphere. Same rules as up here. Reflected light is a thing. So let's put this on a surface. The light's hitting here. We may have some light bouncing back this way. You can highlight this front edge um, a bit, maybe right down at the edge. Let's say it's bouncing directly back off of there. Uh, you may have some light coming from here. You can highlight that side. And then we'll do a cylinder finally. Cylinder is basically just a tube. It could be hollow, it could be solid, uh, but this makes up a lot of what you're gonna be drawing. If you're drawing human figures, a lot of the body is made up by this. This could be a forearm or lower leg, it could be a finger, uh, it could be lots of different things. Uh, let's go again with our same light source. This is coming across this way, hitting the top of our cylinder. Um, so usually, not always, but usually your darkest value is gonna be right next to your lightest value. If something is metallic, uh, that's almost always the case. You get a bright flash of light there and usually right next to that will be a darker value. And so now we're just kind of exploring the form of the cylinder, bringing that shadow down. Um, and we can, let's call this a, this will be a hollow cylinder. Our light source is there, we're getting no light in this top of edge here. But some light is kind of coming in because the space around this is lit. And so you want to kind of create that depth. Probably could have used a softer lid for this, but that's all right. And now there's our, our cylinder, our tube that has some shading in it. We'll put this on a surface. Let's say it's kind of standing up. We're not sure. I'm not sure how it's doing it. Maybe Magneto's lifting it with his brain powers. Uh, and this will be casting a shadow down here. Our light source is above casting down. There's not going to be a shadow directly under it because it's lifting up. So the part that is touching the table, let's start from there. We can pull this shadow kind of across here. We can turn that into a little perspective. And now it really looks like it's lifting up off the table. We'll do a little shadow for the cube as well. Light coming this way. I assume this front face of the block is getting some light as well. And this edge probably not. So we'll start our shadow kind of coming off of there. Bring that all the way around here. Now once you start getting used to these shapes and turning them around in different angles, lighting them differently, casting shadows, suddenly you find when you go to draw your characters or anything that you're drawing, your drawings start to come to life a bit more. Whether it's a cartoon, it's anime, it could be realistic, it could be any type of art, but form and shape is key to all types of art. So nothing quite like making a video that you're pretty sure everyone's going to ignore and then later on I'm going to ask, uh, how do I draw ears? So hopefully you went through this, maybe it got you started thinking about form and about shape. Rewatch the video if you need to. 
go get those books that I uh, just recommended. Or if you're younger, you'll probably just go on Google and get it piece by piece through Google Images. I don't recommend that. I recommend having the actual books in your hand so you can constantly go back and um, reference them. Or if there's something you don't quite understand, reread that chapter and try to really understand what these great professional artists are trying to teach you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Understanding form and shapes is vastly going to improve your art. I guarantee it. If you have any questions about any of the things I covered today, drop it in the comments. I'll be sure to answer those for you. As always, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share to help me grow this channel so that other artists can get some advice and some info to improve their world as well. Thanks.